Hello everyone and welcome back to To Mars and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In this video we are going to send an in situ resource utilization unit, that is an ISR unit, in other words something that drills for ore and converts it to the fuels that we need, over to the moon where we located ore with the resource scanner and we are going to see if this works. So this is the unit in question and it is mostly one part except for the landing legs, the radiator, the drills, and the engines, which are BE-7 engines, I just needed a hydrogen oxygen engine that could throttle and they fit the bill. And so they're about the right size for this particular rig. And fully fueled, this is 18.856 tons and the fuel goes in the shiny tanks, obviously. And there are four of them that uh, are common bulkhead tanks that contain hydrogen and oxygen. And we really ought to have more MLI layers, but I'll get to that when we load it up on the Orion carrier plane and yeah so it'll drill for ore it's going to use the converter unit which is right here in order to convert it to hydrogen and oxygen again and then we'll have stuff land in close proximity to get that propellant I'm using simple logistics which is a mod that lets you transfer resources from one vessel to another as long as they are in render range roughly two kilometers so yeah, that is how we're going to do it. We're not gonna have to connect them physically, thankfully, uh, because that's uh, prone to glitches. Uh, we uh, This is actually using a nuclear reactor, a small nuclear reactor to power it, and that's that unit there. So that is the, how we get the power, but of course we need a huge radiator, and that is what we have up there. So we have plenty of radiator capacity. It looks like this on the moon. Originally, this is all rigged up with uh, procedural tanks and the normal ISR unit, the stock ISR unit and uh, radiator. So yeah, it's all sort of verified. The drills are stock drills, except in realism overhaul, they are made smaller in mass because I doubt NASA is going to send a 750 kilogram uh, drill. I mean, that's a ridiculous size for a drill. So they're currently about 40 kilograms. Oh no, that's the large regolith harvester, 100 kilograms. 100 kilograms is still pretty heavy for a drill, but at least it's in a reasonable range. So they are lighter than the ones that exist in stock. And we gotta try it out. Now we don't have room for a Kerbal engineer to sort of manage this, so it's not gotta be peak efficiency. We'll see if we get enough efficiency out of it or whether I need to tweak the numbers so that we can get you know, the efficiency that we need. We are obviously going to have to land a lot of these over on the moon because right now it can only contain 10 tons of fuel and probably we're going to need more than that, right? Uh, we'll need a whole farm of these, which is why it's a good thing that it's um, a lot of it is just one part, right? The whole rig is 10 parts, so that is helpful. Originally, I made the landing legs built in here. See, uh, if I could say deploy gear and those that are supposed to be the landing legs. But what I found was those landing legs, because it's all one part and it doesn't have suspension, the thing tended to hop up on the moon quite a lot when we turn back to it and then explode. So we don't want to use those. I'll just use the stock landing legs. Okay, so all that being said, we are going to load it up on the Orion carrier plane and see if we can get it to the moon, because that's not entirely certain, right? Uh, we have a lot of delta V here. We have the thrust weight ratio we need to land on the moon. So since the engines can throttle down, that's a reasonable thrust weight ratio. 3,400 will allow it to capture around the moon and descend, but can we get to the moon? It's pretty heavy. So it's not a guarantee. We may need to, instead of using the reusable methane oxygen stage that we have, switch to a, a non-reusable hydrogen oxygen stage. We'll see. Okay, so with that, I'll load it up and take it out to the launch pad. Okay, well, uh, we're sort of lined up with the moon. We're five degrees off, but I'm not too sure how it works because we're going to be going at uh, heading of 75 degrees to head towards Cape Canaveral with the Orion carrier plane. So that relative inclination might go down or it might go up. I forget which way it goes. So we'll just launch and find out on this one. So throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. And that's a whole lot of stuff that is not what I wanted to have happen. Okay, launch. Staging. <laughs> 
And off we go again. Past the speed of sound. Okay, turning off some engines and rolling. I wonder if we could cut out that increase to the relative inclination. I mean, I'm sure we can make Cape Canaveral if we're just a few degrees off, so. Okay, and that's as far as we want it on that. Separation, switch. Um, we actually want the fairings to go. Oh gosh, I didn't even notice the radiator poking out. Shoot. We gotta separate the fairings so it's sort of critical. Because once they separate, then... Uh, okay, that did not activate. Uh, why is the RCS not going? Oh, because we're not controlling from the right direction. Control from here. All right, we've taken a little bit more time than I would have liked. Okay, fuel appears to be settled. Ignition. Okay, passing over the cape here. But, yeah, we're probably not going to have enough. But it'll be interesting to see just how far we get. That'll inform how much extra delta V I need to have in the hydrolock stage, and hopefully we'll be able to squeeze enough out of that. Yeah, just 900 meters per second here. That's not a whole lot, is it? There is some boil off over here. Need to double check those MLI layers. Okay, well, anyway, we will still try. We do have the commsats around the moon, so maybe that'll be enough for the little lander. If we actually get there. Oh, selling the fuel down is taking longer than I thought it would. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'll cut it there just to make sure this has fuel to come back down. That's... Oh, it replenished the ore. That's one thing. I'm, I was going like, how could we be this far off from, you know, having enough Delta V? I mean, if we want thing to be somewhat far off. The launch clamps replenish the ore. We need to lock that ore tank. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll revert. That's an obvious... I was thinking about maybe... You know, getting this over to the moon and putting it into orbit and then, like, refueling it later so that we could bring it down. But, uh, yeah. Okay. The the ore definitely... Oh, wait, but we could convert the ore. Hold on. Um, hmm. <laughs> I don't think that's enough ore. Now, there's a lot that's wrong with this, but... <laughs> okay, we'll wait until we get comms. We'll have to come back around to do the burn anyway. This is complicated. Uh, let's try it. Whatever. Okay, so we will replot for the moon. And actually, when we do the next burn, we'll probably be over Cape Canaveral again. So that'll be convenient. Or close enough to it. Mid-course adjustment will probably be necessary. Let's just do that. It's exploratory here. I don't know how much hydrogen and oxygen the 600 ore will actually get us. It's probably not a good thing to carry the ore with you. That's probably not the efficient thing. I think a lot of it gets wasted if I recall. So what we will see, we, we should absolutely not see the vessel mass go up. That would be a big mistake uh, in the numbers. We should be seeing the vessel mass go down, which, me, uh, which is the inefficiency and that's the loss of mass if it would be better to be carrying the hydrogen oxygen just straight not carrying the ore okay and ignition please hold <laughs> it's like are we balanced uh balanced enough i think i'm gonna turn the rcs off can we the gimbling of the engines should be sufficient. I don't want to waste the RCS fuel. We have a limited amount of that because the RCS is Air Zine NTO here. Okay, all right. Well, we'll use some. <laughs> oh, 
Hold on. I don't know. Mechjeb's attitude adjustment can be tightened up, maybe. I'll use SAS. Let's see if SAS can point at the maneuver better. Yep, uh, this might be one of those times that SAS is better than Smart ASS. And we're gonna need more Delta V, so I'm gonna start uh, the locks in hydrogen production. The, I think it'll be too slow. <laughs> so this is a particular moon ISRU rig. It's not the Mars version. The Mars version version has a uh, air intake on top of it. And so this cannot convert to methane. It only does hydrogen, water, oxygen, and LOX. Okay, that's the end of the fuel there. So let's just kill rotation. And what we should see is that the conversion process, let me just turn off Smart ASS now so it's not puffing the RCS, that the conversion process leads to a loss of mass. So it is better to just carry the fuel and not carry the ore as expected. But how much can we get out of this? Let's see. The nuclear reactor is sized so that we can run the processes continuously. I didn't want to go through that pain. But the production of liquid hydrogen is slower than that of liquid oxygen. Simply because of the nature of ore. I used uh, what you call it, uh, regolith on Mars as a sort of indicator of what percentage of each could be gotten from it. It was some sort of hydrated iron Not necessarily what we would get from the moon. But yeah, we're not going to get much delta V out of it. As you can see. Even if I, let's say, stop the water production. Uh, sorry, oxygen production. Not that that's necessarily realistic, but... Right now we need to rebalance, obviously. Oh, the liquid oxygen is boiling off, too. Gosh darn it. We've got a huge radiator here. I'm just saying, got a huge radiator. Well, yeah, I think we should just revert this. I don't like that it's not, uh, the boil off is so high when we've got such a radiator. All right, we are going to revert this, it is now useless. It's definitely not gonna capture around the moon. So, I'll make some fixes. We'll use the Hydrolock stage and see where we get. Um, I'm tempted to still try the Methane stage because we, we won't need to carry the ore. I guess we'll try it once. Forgive me, but I just need to know how, how far we get with that. Then we'll be able to size future payloads to the moon accordingly, right? So, uh, controlling from the top was no problem. Well, it was a little bit wiggly, but no problem. The MLI layers, we just need to pump up to 100. We need to lock that ore tank. So, see, I had it empty. We need to lock the ore tank so it doesn't fill up again. Okay, uh, staging I'll fix, and then we'll bring it out. Okay, I also prevented the radiator from extending. So, yes, ore is empty. Yes, good. And let's see if time warping... Uh, let me try and see what happens if we just launch at a relative inclination of zero-ish from here. Again, considering that we have to go at a heading of 75 to hit Cape Canaveral initially with the Orion carrier plane, it somewhat complicates things. Or that's as close to zero as we can get. I'll, I'll go on the opposite side here. Let's say three-ish degrees. That makes the heading to target 107 though, so it's probably worse. I don't know. Let's find out. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition. And launch. All right. 75. Maybe it should be earlier rather than later. It's just going straight up, yeah. Yeah, I think this was the wrong way around for the inclination. Anyway, we are past the speed of sound. So it looks like we need to launch earlier. Okay, engines out and rolling. 
okay, everything is good there. But we will probably redo this. Okay, shut down. We went a little bit further. Uh, I guess because we were lighter, I got caught by surprise there. All right, separation. Switch. Control from here. Control from here. CS. Bearing set. Bearing set. And ignition. Okay, we have shut down and we are in orbit. We have 1,400 meters per second now, so that's 500 more than we had before. But more annoyingly, we still have boil off. Uh, so I topped off the MLI layers and we've got the humongous radiator. Now, boil off is going to cause problems, right? Uh, yeah, it is going to cause problems for our production of propellant, so. This is not good. It's not the best timing, but it'll do. Okay, let's shut down for a sec there. And separation. Ooh. Oh, I ran into depletion too. That was my mistake. All right, ignition. We just gotta keep burning like this. We'll get up to moon level eventually. Okay, well we have a pseudo moon encounter. Uh, we could probably do a mid-course adjustment to fix that up. Uh, I guess we'll try it. I mean we could probably get this into orbit but it'll be a derelict. Um, unfortunately we have that stage in orbit that we did not leave enough fuel in to deorbit it. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give it a go. Let's just check out the communication situation out there. I would want at least 3,000 meters per second at this point, so we're about 1,250 short. This is what we're looking at for what we want out of a hydrolock stage. But yeah, maybe we can send something with a claw over there to give this thing some fuel. And it can land, but also we need to check out boil off. Okay, correction burn. We'll have to take this into account. We basically lost about 10 meters per second so far. That's from the boil off. The big problem is when we're drilling and we lose stuff to boil off. But really though, with a radiator like this and with all the MLI layers and MIF that we have boil off at all, well, that should be good enough for now, but are we going to have communication when we get there? We can capture, that's for sure. We just can't land right now. Oh, the oxygen does not seem to be boiling off now. Okay, the moon. Once again. Yeah, we've, we've got some commsats. We'll see how well they work out for us. Actually, Earth is right there. It's visible right now. Just a matter of whether it's going to stay that way for the burn. Well, we could probably get started a little bit earlier, for safety's sake. Ignition. Also, the Arizine and NTO seem imbalanced. Only the RCS uses it. We must have loaded the wrong proportion for some reason. Well, we are in orbit around the moon. Once again, it's just a matter of not having enough to land right here. Okay. Yep, it's in orbit. I'd be comfortable landing with maybe 1,400 meters per second more. So let's see if we can manage that. Back to Space Center. So I want like 7,000 meters per second out of this. So that's asking a lot, but we're going to try and get rid of a lot of structure and the heat shield and everything. Okay, well, I can't quite get the 7,000 meters per second I wanted out of it. Uh, we've got 6,735, and I think this is probably pushing what the Orion carrier plane can carry. Uh, so we'll have to see. Maybe we can find a nice balance with it, and that will work out. These are SE2040V engines. They're hydrolox engines with enormous nozzles. 
and they get 361.4 kilonewtons of vacuum thrust and a 463.27 second ISP. So basically a really good RL10 that has more thrust. <laughs> I mean, more or less. Uh, so that is what we're aiming for here. And we have four of them. It's expensive, it potentially, unless somebody makes a cheap uh, Hydrolox engine. I'm going to tuck these in just for looks. Uh, we've got RCS. That's just Arizine NTO for now. And actually, just to give ourselves a little bit more margin, let's say aluminum, lithium, Arizine NTO. I don't know. There's an aluminum, lithium tank. Um, we... Could have tried a balloon tank or something, and that might have given us the rest of the Delta V, but we'll see how this goes without going that far. So, yeah. Um, let me see. Shall we root to this part and try and save this? Okay. Hydrolox assembly. We'll have to take off the payload in the future. Alright, let me... Go ahead, actually let's go to the VAB and then put it all together. It's pretty big, I mean Hydrolox takes up a lot of room. Okay, so here we are with the Hydrolox stage and I think we are at a better time for the lunar alignment. So we'll see if that works out for us. And it's a heavy load for the Orion carrier plane, we'll see how far we get. It's all testing here. So SAS on and ignition and launch. I mean, the issue here is how much can we get over to the moon with the Orion carrier plane, right? And given this other stage that we have now, we will need to use it to get payloads over to the moon and Mars. What kind of payloads can we expect out of this without low Earth orbit assembly, of course? Oh, well, the heavy load is very much affecting our return, actually. I should have launched straighter up initially, steeper. Oh, well, the inclination is looking better so far. Okay, turning off some engines and rolling again. Oh, we ran out. Uh, that's not ideal. Um, I'm going to revert that. We, we don't want to run out. Hmm. This is complicated. Because we want to make sure we recover this. Yeah. Okay, so we can expect less delta V out of it than normally. Should st still be able to glide all the way. But we should probably test that. The launch timing seemed okay though, so we'll time warp to roughly the same position. Okay, SAS on, throttle up, and ignition, and launch. A better launch this time because I anticipated the need for a steeper trajectory. Okay, focusing on orbital speed, but uh, we really want the stage time here. That's something I was lacking last time, so I wasn't paying attention to that, I was just looking for the right speed, the 4,000 meters per second, but I don't know, it seems like we would be able to get to 4,000 meters per second this time. Um, I don't know what happened last time, maybe it was because of the bad launch trajectory. It looks like we'll be able to get fast enough, unless it's telling me the wrong delta V here. If we get to 4,000, I don't think we need to test land it, because we've taken it down from that speed before. Yeah, it must have been just a bad trajectory and a huge amount of drag last time. Okay, yeah, we, we've overdone it even. So, yep, it should be able to handle that. And here we are. Let's see, RCS on. Prograde, uh... Where is it controlling from now? Oh, uh, you know, kill rotation. This is fine. <laughs> I think we, we don't have a control unit on this, so it doesn't even know where to control from. That's a problem. Fairings? Okay. Turn. Oh, oh no. Oh no. No, don't, don't do that. Okay. 
Kill rotation did not feel like it was killing rotation very well. We may need a control point on this. Um... Or maybe it's imbalanced. Um... Because the lander, uh, the lander sort of sent, but not quite. But sh they should be able to point through that, though. So we might actually be able to uh, carry a heavier stage than this. Maybe we can push the 7,000, but uh, not if this keeps going like this. I don't know what it was controlling from, but we don't have a good control point. Okay, let me fix that. I think we'll just have it on the bottom node. And, yeah, maybe we can squeeze some more fuel in here. Okay, as far as balance is concerned... Well, I mean, it's true that this is sort of offset because of where this attachment point is. So we'll try and balance it a little bit better, like that, and maybe that'll help. Okay, well... Let's see if we can make it happen this time. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition, and launch. But the inclination sure is good timing it like this. So that's a positive. Yeah, it's looking fine. And shut down at 4000, separation switch and make sure we're controlling from the new probe core down there control from here okay prograde rcs on fairings and ignition please control properly <laughs> all right okay looking good drag though drag can get you especially with the kind of launch vehicle we've got and you know the fact that the uh, payload is on the side of it. Okay, well it's looking like we'll have enough this time, so that's good. There are still many things that can go wrong though, so let's be cautious. Okay, and shut down. 274 by 224, and we've got 3000 left. We'll have to use a little bit from the lander to finish off the transfer, but that should be fine. It should have 3400 meters per second and using 200 or so isn't going to cause a problem. So, let us, and our inclination is good this time, so we've got that going for us. Uh, we should have that satellite overhead over here. It'll, it's slow enough that it's not going to move too much in the time. So, we are looking good, finally. Okay, so that'll be our approach. It's taking five days for some reason, but it's probably not a problem. All right. I didn't put particularly strong RCS thrusters on the stage. All right, well, I'll ignite it and let the engines turn it. Okay, need to double check that we aren't depleting this fuel. Nope, it looks okay. All right, okay, separation. And over here, make sure we're controlling from that properly. All right, um, RCS is active. The node is not available. So let me just do a quick replot here. All right, fine by me. Let's take that and turn. And we'll use SAS because that was better last time. And a little bit late, but ignition. Okay, well, that's a close approach. Let's see if we can do it here. No make course adjustment necessary. Oil off happening, but uh, decreasing, decreasing but certainly happening. We're losing delta V there. Uh, oxygen is balanced now. Um, that, I don't know why another probe's batteries would be getting low. Um, 
Maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh, I think it's the stage that we just dumped. That would make sense. Uh, I think I might want to time more. We know. I think that was the stage that we spent. I think I want to time warp in the tracking station so it doesn't keep dragging me out of time warp. Liquid hydrogen boil off still happening. So focusing on the moon and checking out where that all important ore is. Really, we're going to try and land over there. Um, our inclination might not be quite enough to hit the spot exactly. Well, or we would only get the southern end. We'll see. Uh, it is important that we land on a side that's facing Earth for communication as well. I might capture loosely and then assess the inclination. Time for the capture burn. Okay, yeah, let's get to an orbital period of one day and then I want to tilt the orbit so that we can hit our preferred landing site. Okay, so, yeah, like this, we'll just clip the little bottom end, but that's probably not good. So I want to note the other way, do a little bit of that, and that should help us get a better chunk of that purple spot. The fact that it's at night doesn't matter because we have the reactor. That is very important for the moon when you have night time for an extended period of time. Okay, we are high above the moon now. We can actually see the patches of ore there, but that's not so helpful. They're on the wrong side right now. So we are just going to reorient here and make this inclination change. Got to watch out for ignitions on these. We have seven left. And trying to take a look at this, we might need more than I've plotted here. We're barely skimming the purple zone there. I don't know. It always looks like we're only skimming the bottom end of it. <laughs> uh, maybe I did the wrong thing. We'll see. So, I'm going to plot a maneuver here to bring our orbit down the rest of the way and correct whatever rest of inclination we need to correct to get to... Uh, yeah, let's say we want to be a little bit further up here. That's making things tighter as far as the delta V is concerned, but... Well, we can use all of it. It's not like we're saving it for something else. Uh, we are approaching the node, but we do not have communication here right now. That's a surprise. We have a relay probe up there. I guess that's too far. We also have one down there. Wondering why we suddenly can't talk to either of them. Nope, now we have a direct line back, so, well, that's safe anyway. I guess we'll try and do this burn now. It's just a retro burn. Uh, yeah, Smart ASS is wob... Yeah, it's wobbling. Trying to set up a farm of these is going to be interesting, though. Okay, that's more or less what I wanted there. And, yeah, more inclination stuff. Apparently we did not do enough of that. Or did it in the wrong place. But 2,200 for the final bit of landing is fine by me, so we're not short or anything. This is overall a high concentration region. And I'm gonna take advantage of MechJeb's landing guidance, so I'll sort of pick a target here for reference. Mare Imbrium, by the way, is where we are attempting to land and show landing predictions. So right now we're not entering the ground, so I'm just gonna have it help out with our trajectory. Well, as long as we land anywhere over here, it'll be fine. 
As far as precision goes, we need to be much more precise when landing the other ones over here, assuming that we're going to build a farm of these. Okay, ignition. And at full thrust, it really uses a lot more pitch. Well, sort of... Uh, okay, 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 okay. Will it moderate at all? No, I think I'll use smart. Uh, I'll just use SAS here. Okay, we are at full thrust now. So maybe we don't need to be. Let's see, that suicide burn countdown, I don't actually want to see going up for a little while. Well, we're a little bit away from the target, but I'm landing here anyway. Okay, here we go. We might have too much thrust, no. Please. Okay, no we don't. It's just right. <laughs> it's just the right amount of thrust. Good. Uh don't go away. Okay, we've landed. Alright, RCS off. We are a nice low set lander that doesn't tip over. Very important for me. Uh, liquid hydrogen is boiling off. Let's see. Deploy drills. Sorry it is in the dark, but... You know, it is that time of the month. Okay, start surface harvester. Okay. Um, well, it doesn't show ore coming in though. Hold on. Maybe we... Nope, we don't have ISRU started. There's no ore here? After all this work... Oh, it's because I've locked the tank. <laughs> right, I locked the tank. Okay, okay. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, I locked the tank so that it wouldn't fill it up on the pad. Okay, so we're getting ore. Slowly. The question is whether we can get ore fast enough to defeat the boil off on the liquid hydrogen. That's probably the most important thing. It seems like we can. It's just gonna take forever. Let's see. We are not replenishing liquid hydrogen fast, but we are getting it. But it's we're getting it at a declining rate. <laughs> Which is not nice. Oh, and suddenly we started to have oxygen boil off. Having run the drills for long enough, maybe... Hmm... This might not be enough radiator power. Let's see, well, if I stop the... Yeah... That we had a declining rate of... Hydrogen replenishment, and then the... I mean, maybe we had a declining rate of hydrogen replenishment because the boil-off was increasing. Well now, they're both increasing in depletion. Oh, no, the oxygen has balanced out. I guess that is because we cooled off because we're turning off stuff. So we're not converting anymore right now. But then we're losing the liquid hydrogen. I may need to, like, sort of cheat things a little bit and increase the... I, it wouldn't be a cheat, but increase the amount of ore that we get and then also the amount of hydrogen and oxygen that we get per second. Just the rate. So that we can beat boil off a little bit better. Let's see, if we only have one drill running and we have the ISRU unit running, can we continue to get a good amount of hydrogen here? It still declines. Oh, and that really went down there. Yeah. Okay, so I might have to tweak these to get a better rate out of our ISRU units. But we got one over here. Uh, we had to make a special hydrolock stage to do it, but we managed to get one over here. So that's about the limit of what we can send over with one, with one Orion carrier plane launch. We'll probably have to, if, if we want to send anything heavier, we're going to have to build it in orbit. So with that, 
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.